Now let's see the definition of a graph. A graph G is a triple consisting of vertex set, head set and the relation that associates each that associates with each edge two vertices called its endpoints. Now you can express the graph using these three. So one is if you want to represent a graph you have to say what are the vertices. So in this case if you see this example the vertices are 1, 2, 3, 4 right and what are the edges. So in this case the edges are E1, E2, E3, E4, E5 isn't it? E1, E2, E3, E4, E5 and what is the relationship between the edges and the vertices? Now if you observe this edge E1 is between 1 and 2 right and edge E3 is between 3 and 4, edge E5 is between 2 and 4 right and edge E2 is between 2 and 3, edge E4 is between 4 and 4 and 1. So in this case we are talking about a undirected graph. So that is why we need not worry about where, where the edge is starting and where the edge is ending. In case if the graph would have been directed then you know we could have written this as an ordered pair. Now if you observe this the relation is unordered right. So ordered pair means you will write let's say if you have an arrow like this you will write 1 comma 2 ok we shall see that topic later as of now this is the basic definition of graphs ok. Now there are special types of edges in a graph so one type of edge is called a loop an edge whose endpoints are equal is called a loop so if you see this let us say there are three vertices 1 2 and 3 and now if you see this edge E3 this is called a loop because it is having both the endpoints as one only got it now if you see the description of this graph the graph is containing 1 2 3 the vertices and this mod of you know v of g where v of g is the vertex set of graph g is called as cardinality cardinality means the number of vertices an edge is having sorry a graph is having now how many vertices this graph is having 1 2 3 that is why cardinality is 3 got it and now uh, the number of edges e1 e2 e3 now they can be counted as mod e of g right so what what is e of g it is the edge set now the number of elements in the edge set gives us the number of edges of the graph and now the edges are e1 is from 1 to 2 sorry is between 1 to 2 we have to call it as between 1, 1 to 2 and e2 is between 2 and 3 e2 is between 1 and 3 right and now e3 is between 1 and 1 so this one is called as the loop okay so this e3 this special edge is called as the loop which is having both ends as the same vertex right and the other type of edges which are special is multi edges so edges having the same pair of endpoints is called as multi edges so which means there can be more than uh, one edge present between two vertices so look at this example now if you look at this e1 so 1 and 2 it is between 1 and 2 and if you look at e2 and e3 both the edges are between 2 and 3 right so such edges are called multi edges and if a graph is having you know multi edges it is called as multi graph right so if you look at this the description is like this graph is containing v comma e vertex set and edge set now vertex set contains 1 2 3 1 2 3 vertices and edges is containing 1 2 3 so 1 2 3 3 edges and the number of uh, sorry uh, e1 is between 1 and 2 e2 and e3 both are between 2 and 3 isn't it e2 is between 2 and 3 and e3 also, also between 2 and 3 such a graph is called as multi graph okay fine now if a graph is not having any loops or multi edges then it is called a simple graph see this a simple graph is a graph having no loops and multi edges now if you observe this this graph g1 it is having it is not having any loops or multi edges therefore this is simple now if you see this graph it is having a loop so it is not a simple graph right and if you see this one it is having multi edges so where do you see multi edges is e3 and e4 these two edges are between 2 and 4 therefore this is not simple and also if you see this uh, there is a loop here and there is a multi edge so it is not simple right so any graph which is not having this loop and the multi edges is called simple and also there is a common word which is called adjacency or adjacent so two uh, but two edges or sorry two vertices are said to be adjacent if there is a edge between them see this 
when u and v are the endpoints of an edge then they are adjacent right so what i mean to say is see one and two are adjacent because there is an edge e1 now one and three are not adjacent because there is no edge so adjacency means when there is an edge connecting two vertices we say that the two vertices are adjacent got it okay now let's see how to represent a graph so till now we have been seeing one representation so we can list all the vertices and edges that is what we have seen till now and that is one type of representation so which means if you want to represent a graph you need not always draw it and show it you can also do it this way so the graph is containing vertices and edges and the vertices of the graph are 1 2 3 and the edges of the graph are e1 e2 e3 now to describe each edge you can say e1 is between 1 and 2 e2 is between 2 and 3 and e3 is between 1 and 3 so if you say like this you know this description is enough to write down this graph therefore you need not always give a diagram you could even represent it this way right and the other way of representing it especially in computers is by using the adjacency matrix so what is adjacency matrix is now if you have n vertices let us assume that okay in this graph we have three vertices right now we are going to have a 3 by 3 matrix in case if you have n vertices you are going to have n by n matrix and if two uh, vertices are adjacent we are going to write a one there so see this now for this graph if you observe it one and two are adjacent therefore go to the first row and the second column so this represents one and two in case if there is an edge between these two i am going to write one got it and 1 and 3 see this 1 and 3 there is an edge between them so i am going to write 1 and similarly between 2 and 1 right so what does this entry mean second row first column between 2 and 1 right so 2 and 1 again there is an edge therefore i am writing 1 right and between 2 and 3 there is an edge i am writing 1 between 3 and 1 there is an edge i am writing 1 between 3 and 2 there is an edge i am writing 1 now if you observe this in a simple graph if you don't have any loops the entire uh, you know diagonal this leading diagonal is going to be zeros so what does it mean there is no edge between 1 and 1 there is no edge between 1 and 2 there is no edge between 3 and 3 and also if the graph if the graph is undirected like this then the matrix is going to be symmetric symmetric means if i take a and a transpose both will be equal so if you observe this why is that so is you know if you have an entry a of ij that will be equal to a of j i so why is this so so the reason is now if there is an edge between i and j it means that there is also an edge between j and i if there is no edge between i and j there will be no edge between j and i therefore a equal to a transpose got it and so we can say that for every undirected simple graph the a equal to a transpose and also uh, the leading diagonal edges will be the leading diagonal will contain all zeros all of them will be zeros and there is one more property generally associated with a vertex that is called as degree of the vertex and if you see this vertex one so what is degree of the vertex is how many edges are incident on the vertex right so if you look at this vertex one there are two edges incident on it so one is e1 and other is e3 right therefore the degree of vertex one is two and if you look at this uh, you know second vertex vertex two there are two edges incident on it e1 and e2 therefore degree of this you know vertex two is two similarly degree of this vertex three is three in this case it so happened that all the degrees are equal but then it might it might not be the case always for example if you take a graph like this let us say this is vertex 1 vertex 2 vertex 3 vertex 4 now the degree of vertex 1 is 1 degree of vertex 2 is 2 degree of vertex 3 is 2 degree of vertex 4 is 1 got it now there if you look at this adjacency matrix and if you are going to write this way one other way of finding out the you know degree is if you observe this if you observe this row 1 now what does it mean it is going to give us 
wherever there are ones it means that all those edges are incident on one therefore the sum of all ones in a row gives us the degree of the vertex representing that row and since it is a symmetric matrix you can also observe that the sum will be same along that particular column which means if along the first row the sum is 2 then along the first column the sum will be 2 which will also give us the degree of the vertex 1 only right so how are we getting this because each one is going to represent that there is an edge between 1 and 2 and 1 and 3 isn't it and what about the uh, definition of the degree it is nothing but the number of edges that are edges that are incident on that vertex therefore the sum of all ones across a row is going to give us the number of edges that are incident on that particular vertex either you can count the entire ones in a row or in the column right so that is how you can even find out the degree of a vertex so degree of the vertex 1 is 2 degree of the vertex 2 is 2 degree of the vertex 3 is 3 for this graph got it and also if you want to count it in the column wise see 2 2 2 got it okay Hi. if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of one lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5 percent and iits University is better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%, but all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into university is better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries, for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building. And then LOR guidance. And GRE and English test assistance. And education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral. Which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities, or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan, and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you getting it, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews, and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join the of visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia. Canada. So we guide we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494554454. Okay, thank you.